Hey guys, it seems like forever that I made one of these videos. Uh, I took some time off for April and May. Didn't do any of these uh, news videos, so I kind of have a little bit uh, catching up to do. And so this is our kind of catch up for the e-news cycle. Ketchup. 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 There's not a lot of releases or anything like that that happened in June, so I'll go over some of the older stuff that I kind of missed um, for the previous months and uh, kind of just make it all in a, a whole catch-up kind of video for this. So yeah, so I, I hope you like it and uh, and let's jump in. Uh, first, just some, some news for, for June. Uh, there was two big conventions or uh, trade shows happening um, in Europe for kind of e-bikes and micro-mobility sort of thing. Micro-mobility Europe uh, happened from June 8th to June 9th in Amsterdam. It all encompasses all types of PEVs, not just e-bikes, from small electric cars all the way down to electric rollerblades. I've seen uh, that they even had some of those, which is pretty cool. Um, there's hundreds of companies there, a lot of products to go over. Um, I won't go into too much detail on them, but there's a few that it caught my eye was the, like the Async A1 e-bike kind of looks like a futuristic kind of something that you would see like out of cyberpunk 2077 that video game uh looked really cool i think uh mr central driver had um a couple videos about it and uh was having some problems with his so he didn't get to to run like a full review or anything like that but really sweet looking uh kind of e-bike there was the aventura x which was kind of looks like an electric uh, Vespa, vintage Vespa gas scooter with an electric motor in it. Those look really cool, you know, for city travel or just, you know, tooling around on, on dates, like they kind of show in the little trailer that they have for it. It, it looks like it'd be a really cool, uh, cool little scooter, little vehicle for that. Like I said, there was a ton of electric kick scooters, um, mini cars that they had there. Um, I'm really excited to see that, that they're having another micro mobility one in America in, in October. I'm really excited for that one and I'm really looking for it in San Francisco. I believe it runs from October 19th and 20th. Um, I'm really, really excited to see what they have in store for, for that. Um, Eurobike 2023 is also the, the second big kind of uh, trade show that they had in June. It ran from the 21st to the 25th in Germany. Unlike the micromobility convention, it was obviously more for bikes since Eurobike. E-bikes kind of dominated the event is from what I hear. A lot of cool e-bikes were shown there. Um, a lot of them were kind of, since it was a European event, they're, they're more geared towards the European market market so you know 250 watt motors you know more of like commuters type stuff less uh, big flashy you know powerful e-bikes like you would see in the in the u.s but there were still a lot of cool stuff that were shown there um, turn showed off their new hsd model which is kind of their update to their popular cargo utility e-bike that they've had for quite a while um, they updated some of the motor components and the electronics on that one a company called yadia y yadia I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but they had their uh, Trooper 1, Trooper 01, which reminds me a lot of the Rev 1 from Ride 1 Up. Really cool looking e-bike, you know, moped, motorcycle style. Uh, Engwe showed off their unique looking uh, folding bikes that like the X26 and also their smaller versions like the X24 and the X20. I believe they're just different wheel sizes. I think obviously the 26 is for the 26 inch wheel, 24 I think is 24 inch wheel and 20 is for the 20 inch wheel. Uh, but they're really cool looking bikes, folding designs, and really big batteries on them too. It looks really cool. Uh, Electric, uh, their website, and they have a nice video of it and a nice rundown of all the bikes that they that they saw there when Michael went over there to, to check on that. So if, if you want a full rundown, I, I'd definitely say head over to there for that. But that's basic over, uh, overview of what I saw from there. Back in March, um, New York passed regulations that uh, indicated that any electric bikes or scooters sold there would need to be UL certified, the batteries in general. Now in June, the city announced that they'd be allocating $25 million in federal funds to building 173 charging stations or charging and storing stations to further curb kind of the fires and, and mishaps from uh, those battery in incidences. Uh, the mainly relates to the New York City Housing Authority, which provides, I guess, uh, 53 different housing authority apartment building sites. And so there was, I guess there are a few occurrences in their buildings that, that caused kind of major issues. And so they allocated these funds to there so that people 
don't necessarily have to charge their e-bike batteries inside their apartments, which if something happens, you got a whole building full of hundreds of people, there's major, major issues. Um, and so they're allocating these funds for external charging stations. They didn't really go into detail of what those entail. I, in my mind, I kind of picture like, you know, those uh, parcel kind of FedEx uh, drop boxes that, you know, in apartments were next to the mailboxes where you put your package and the uh, you know, a postal person takes the key out, puts it in your box, that sort of thing. That's what I'm thinking. Like you throw your battery in there uh, and charge it overnight when it's in a kind of a fireproof lock box sort of thing. So nobody can steal it. I'm not sure if they provide chargers for that or you bring your own charger and plug it in. Um, Cause I think that would kind of uh, introduce another problem. If you have a faulty charger uh, for more safety, maybe they provide their own chargers. Uh, the, the station has their own charger built into it, but I don't know, I'm just speculating. It's, it still kind of bothers me that e-bikes continue to be kind of vilified as the main issue um, when the, the main problem is either human error or people are using cheap, cheap batteries. And so they're using like the cheapest battery that you can get on Amazon or eBay and they're, they're kind of cheaply made and they're causing fires. So I was kind of glad to see that Senator Chuck Schumer kind of made an announcement at, at this event that specifically that cheap Chinese batteries were kind of the main cause of these fire issues. It's allowed cheap, faulty, China-made batteries to come into our country. And they're the ones that have caused most of these fires. And so I'm kind of um, kind of glad that they kind of taken the, the view off of e-bikes because e-bikes has kind of been, you know, under the radar of like, these are the problems. Um, even if you buy, a, you know, a, a good e-bike from somebody, there's always somebody saying like, oh, what if the battery explodes just because of these, these new stories? Like I said, there wasn't a lot of new e-bike releases in June. Um, I do know that Specialized made their new kind of uh, Turbo Levo SL kids e-bike, kind of a, a kids mountain bike. I don't, I don't go over usually the high, higher end uh, e-bikes like Specialized, but from what I see, it looks like a cool little mountain bike. Still, it's specialized cost, so I, I think the when I saw it, it was almost four thousand dollars for it. But it looks like a cool, uh, nice little enduro mountain bike for for younger kids. From what I see, yeah, it definitely looks like just a miniaturized version of a specialized uh, e-bike, uh, mountain e-bike. So that's cool. Some of the the new stories that I missed, I think it was in back in April, Aventin came out with a new Cinch uh, update to their Cinch model, their folding e-bike, the Cinch Two. I tried them with a belt. But... Oh, you can't do that. You got to cinch them. Yeah, we told you to cinch them. Yeah, you just paper bag them out and cinch them. Uh, it looks a lot like the the Cinch One. If you you know side by side, if you looked at them, you, most of the time you won't even see a difference between them. But uh, apparently they updated it to have a torque sensor. So Venton's kind of uh, doing updates on all their models to bring in torque sensors and kind of bring in that updated kind of pedal assist technology into them, which is great. I don't hate Caden sensors, but it's definitely nice to have a torque sensor. The It looks like they discounted their Cinch 1 models. So if you're still looking for just a, just a basic folding e-bike, then you can get away with just the, the basic Cinch. The, the new Cinch 2s come in like a, a gray and a blue sapphire kind of color, which look really nice. I love the pink colors that they went with this. Otherwise, the specs look about the same. 750 watt peak motor, 500 watt nominal, same battery, 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. Because of the, the torque sensor, it looks like they upped the, the range on the new model, 55 miles versus 40 miles on the older one. Other than that, it looks like the integrated lighting on this. So that's kind of one of the things that I did a review of the original Cinch last year. And that was kind of one of my big pain points is that they didn't have any headlights built into it and no tail lights built into it. Cause I feel that's kind of a, a safety concern to not have any kind of tail lights. And it looks like they put integrated lights kind of into the frame, like they've been doing on their newer models, which actually worked as turn signals as well. So really excited to see that. One weird thing that kind of stuck out to me is that the Cinch, the Cinch 2, still is coming with mechanical brakes. Um, I feel like most companies are switching over to hydraulic brakes and the Aventon still went with mechanical brakes on this. Um, I kind of torn back and forth on, you know, if I if I like mechanical brakes or if I, I think that everybody should go to hydraulic brakes. I, I guess mechanical brakes, they get the job done. Um, I don't prefer them just because of the, the amount of maintenance that you have to do to them and constantly adjust your brakes. At the price range, I guess you can still get away with it. The, the new Cinch is $17.99, I think, right now. Uh, but it looks like a really cool bike. Uh, new, nice new addition. Another new release that I believe happened 
last month, the month before, uh, Velotric came out with their new kind of road, kind of gravel bike, the, the Thunder One. Which is kind of weird, now I'm looking back at it and pull this up on Velotric's website, and they changed it. It just doesn't say Thunder One anymore, it just says T1. So I'm not sure if they, they officially changed the name or if they're just, you know, shortening it. But, uh, just weird. Uh, but the, I'll just call it the T1. The T1, uh, they come in two different uh, frame styles, the high step and kind of a step through option. But if you look at them, it, if you, if you didn't know there was a higher step version, you would assume this was the high step version. So it's kind of weird that they had two different versions. One kind of just the, the top bar is just a little bit lower than the other one. The other one kind of goes out of its way to be a little bit higher. There's a little rise uh, towards the, the seat end. It was designed to be more of a sleeper bike, low power motor. It's only 350 watts, uh, 36 volt battery, uh, 9.8 amp hours. So smaller battery integrated into the frame. A torque sensor built into it, 20 miles per hour limit. Um, it's It doesn't have a throttle um, also. So 25 if you unlock it, but only through pedal assist. It comes with Tektro hydraulic brakes, so good co components there. Shimano 8-speed transmission. They they do have two different prices. The step through is $14.99 when I saw it, $17.99 for the high step. Uh, that's not any sales or anything like that. But other than that, it, it looks like they have some kind of uh, integrated smart technology into it, like an anti-theft key system, keyless lock, a GPS tracker, riding modes that you can customize, and you can track your, your rides and health tracker and stuff like that built into it. So some app functionality built into it so that you can sync it with your phone and, and, and do crazy stuff that way. Um, I really like Velotrick bikes. They don't have a lot of models. Um, they kind of had their, their fat tire, uh, the Nomad, I believe it is, and then and their Discover is the slimmer tire model. Um, so there, this would be the, the third in the, the Velotrick uh, lineup. But like I said, I really like their bikes. Um, I don't think they get a lot of attention. They're not one of the flashy ones out there, like um, making a ton of models and a ton of different versions of their bikes. They're just kind of more uh, uh, simplified model lineup. Hopefully they'll come out with like maybe a cargo bike or a utility bike version, or even a moped style e-bike. But um, who knows? That's if they're going to fall, what everybody else does, who knows if they will. Uh, another new model that I saw, uh, electric bike company came out with their model J, which is their kind of like a super 73. I, I hate calling them super 73s, but it's a super 73 style kind of a moped, um, you know, cruiser style e-bike. I haven't tried one, but as far as the, what they'd say, I hear a lot of people love electric bike company as like a bike manufacturer. They have really high quality parts. Um, they're made in America. Well, I think they're, most of the parts are manufactured in America, some overseas, but they try to make everything as much as possible in America, but everything's shipped in and they assemble it in, in house in America, which means you can highly customize it. So you can pick a plethora of paint options on their site. You can uh, choose the paint of the frame. You can choose the tires. You can choose um, even the, the chain guard, uh, the, the forks, uh, if you want them to be hydraulic forks or rigid forks. So there's quite a few different um, options that you can do on these and to change it and customize it how you want it to look. Um, so that's really great. But they do have three different uh, options with batteries. So you can get just the single battery, dual battery, or triple battery. 28 miles per hour uh, speed limit on there. They don't go into details as far as the motor goes. I'm assuming it's a 750 watt motor, but they don't list it and they just list the max speed of it when it's unlocked to 28. But other than that, it looks really cool. Uh, hopefully some, some reviewers are gonna get some of these sent to them and they'll, they'll check them out and, and see how cool that is. But it looks really sweet. And one news story that I kind of missed while I was um, not uploading not making these videos was the, the kind of the drama with the Hemiway. The Hemiway uh, pony, I believe it was, uh, which was kind of funny. I even made a, like a joke video of that, uh, saying that like the pony looked just like the jackrabbit. Hey, hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. What do you mean you've seen this? It's brand new. What do you... You'll find out. And apparently Jackrabbit sued Hemiway saying like, hey, dude, you just basically ripped us off uh, our complete design. And so Hemiway recalled all the bikes. I don't know if they even shipped any yet, but they, they did a recall. They apologized and said, hey, sorry, we, you know, this wasn't intentional. Just kind of one of those things of like our manufacturers had some, you know, designs and 
they kind of sent these out um, as a like one of their products, which is understandable. Like I remember a few years back when the Rad uh, Rad Rover Five had that kind of you know frame design that you saw also in Hemiway, you also saw in Aventon. Like there was a bunch of different e-bikes, fat tire e-bikes that had that kind of same kind of frame design. I'm not saying anybody ripped off anybody, but when you outsource your stuff to manufacturers in China, sometimes they'll sell their stock to other places, and you know it's not like they have a trademark or uh, anything on the design, so they'll send it off to whoever wants it. Um, but yeah, so it's understandable that they apologized. They recalled everything and, and said, you know, you're not going to see any of the ponies on the, on the market. So uh, it's kind of funny, but it, it still looked like a cool a bike nonetheless. But if you want one, just go to Jackrabbit, I guess. While I was not making videos, it, it seemed like there was a bunch of kind of, uh, weird stories that are happening in just the, the e-bike market in general. I don't really want to kick them when they're down, but it just seems like there's a lot of bad news coming out of Red Power Bikes. Back in April, the, the company had their fourth round of layoffs. And from what I hear, this is their most brutal cut yet. Um, most of their, their customer facing teams were cut down to the bone. Um, and then immediately after this, pretty much remaining customer service seemed to, seemed to implode on themselves. They completely shut down their phone lines because um, they were completely jam packed. They couldn't get through. This rad decided to go to chat and email, but then those things completely got overwhelmed and there's hours and hours and hours of wait just to talk to somebody. It wasn't, this wasn't unique to rad as from what I hear electric, their phone lines were shut down temporarily. Also, I think they even show something on their website that says like, if you email us, it's going to be delayed response. If you call us, it's going to be at least an hour wait time, which is kind of crazy. This is the spring riding season is in full effect. And I, th I think a lot of these execs don't <laughs> realize how many uh, riders just just immediately come out. Like it'll be like February, March, nothing. And then April, thousand customers are all calling out at once and they'll just jam their phone line. So in Rad's case, it was not good that they completely cut their customer service down to the bone and then expected their remaining you know people to continue to to provide the same kind of level of service. The e-bike market in general seems to be like in a, a decline. There's a lot of excess stocks is from what I hear from manufacturers. A lot of stuff where the demand from COVID is fizzled out and a lot of the e-bike companies are going back to what pre-COVID numbers were. Inflation has raised all the prices and that also leads to a lot of stock that just sits on the shelves and the, their warehouses. Coupled with also so many new e-bike manufacturers and e-bike companies out there releasing bikes, that kind of saturates the market and then also leads to a softening of sales. It's one kind of thing I've seen so far this year is there's a lot of bigger sales. It looks like a lot of companies are trying to get that inventory out the doors. And so like say, you know, Rad Power Bikes, they, they dropped their Rad Rover 6 Plus $700 off. I think it was $2,100 or something like that and they dropped it to $1,400. Magicycle has uh, many of their models from anywhere from $600 to $400 off. A lot of flagship models that uh, companies have like large quantities of have been dropped drastically in price. Like the Invention, uh, Adventure and the Hemiway Cruiser are both $300 off right now. The regular price is $1,700 and they're all $1,400 right now. Juice Bikes has a ton of discounts across the board on their whole site, anywhere from $400 to $600 off. Before, like last year, I remember seeing like sales were usually $100 to $200 off on average, but now it looks like everything's from $300 to $400 off and even more in some cases. So it's kind of crazy. It's uh, a buyer's market, but we'll see if this continues, if, if the if the market keeps going down, if demand keeps going down, or if because of gas prices and stuff like that, everything rebounds back up and, and more people are looking towards e-bikes and sales come back up. But other than that, like I said, there's, I had like three months of, of news stories to catch up on. So I didn't want to jam it all back into this. Those were just kind of the, the, the main things, the main stories that kind of stood out to me. I'm really looking forward to, to any new e-bike re -bike releases. Micromobility uh, USA is coming in October. I'm really looking forward to, to see what kind of new technologies they have. Hopefully we'll we'll have some more releases and news for next month. Well, thank you for watching. If you like this video, um, want to see more videos from me, please um, subscribe to my channel. Uh, hit a like that helps out my channel in general or this video. Um, maybe even leave a comment. Let me know what you think of, of any of the stories that I went over or if anything I missed. I, I thank you for watching and I hope you stay safe out there and keep riding. Thanks. Bye.